nine, welcome to this video um, on irony in the text Je Jekyll and Hyde. Um, I hope you all had a great weekend and enjoyed the sun um, somewhat. Um, but yeah, today we're looking at irony. So Stevenson's text employs several types of irony revolving around Henry Jekyll, a man who breaks promises. So in this lesson, you'll learn how these broken promises are the basis for his downfall and also the novel's irony. Gifts from ancient Greece. So the text looks at two things um, taken from ancient Greece. One, the Hippocratic Oath, and two, irony. So the Hippocratic Oath um, was where physicians promised to preserve life and heal the sick, to maintain doctor-patient confidentiality, and to pass knowledge down through the generations. Um, so this was basically an oath that they had to say before they became a physician, and another word for physician is a doctor. Um, so in the book, Dr. Henry Jekyll would have taken this oath because he is a doctor. The next thing, irony, refers to words intended to mean the opposite of what they actually mean, or events that are contrary to what is expected. It comes in three main forms in the text, so verbal, situational and dramatic. These are all present in the novel and actually relate to the three main parts of the Hippocratic Oath. So let's see how, beginning with verbal irony. Okay, so your first task is to research the Hippocratic Oath. This would form context for your writing. So in a piece paragraph, if you spoke about the Hippocratic Oath and linked that to the text, then that would be um, context. So that's what I would like you to do. Just type it in Google, see what see what comes up, and just write um, something that you've learned maybe about the Hippocratic Oath. Okie dokie. So now let's look at verbal irony. Protecting confidentiality. An example of verbal irony occurs when Mr. Utterson, the lawyer, is curious about the mysterious character of Mr. Hyde and comments on this to Dr. Jekyll. As a doctor, Henry Jekyll would naturally protect the patients he treats. People like Utterson would assume this of the good doctor. Verbal irony is in play when, in reference to Mr Hyde, Jekyll tells Utterson, I am quite sure of him. I have grounds for certainty that I cannot share with anyone. For other characters, such as Utterson, this can be construed as protecting his patient as an ethical physician, and for this reason, Jekyll's withholding information would not likely be questioned. But for the reader, it is different. The reader is now um, the reader by now understands his grounds for certainty and why he cannot share. The reader knows that Hyde is Jekyll's cruel and criminal alter ego or other self. And in this example of verbal irony, the words do not mean what they seem, but refer to something else outside of the character's expectations. So just to clarify this for you, we're going to watch this video, which is just going to explain what verbal irony is. Great weather we're having. Awesome job. You're a tremendous athlete. Compliments, right? Well, maybe. Depending on the attitude and tone of voice behind these lines, they very well may be compliments. They may also be, though, pointed and attacking lines. This slight change of attitude behind the lines reveals what we call verbal irony. So when someone says, great weather we're having, it is quite possible that person really means that. If the sun is shining, the birds are singing, and the wind is calm, but if the weather is horrible, the clouds are looming, and the wind is a raging tempest, and someone says, great weather we're having, he probably doesn't actually mean that. He probably means that the weather is horrible, but he has said the opposite. This is verbal irony, when the speaker says the opposite of what he means. I know what you're thinking. Isn't this sarcasm? Isn't the speaker being sarcastic? Yes, 
When a speaker says the opposite of what he means, that is verbal irony. When the speaker then goes the step farther to mean the opposite of what he says and seeks to be a little pointed and mean, like he's making fun of something, then you have sarcasm. Take the second example. Awesome job! Someone accomplishing his lifelong dream? Awesome. Someone winning a sports championship? Awesome. Someone rear-ends another car? Not awesome. So when the passenger says, Awesome job! They probably mean the opposite with a hint of poking fun. That is verbal irony, and that is sarcastic. You're a talented athlete. Said to an Olympian? Authentic. No verbal irony present. Said to the klutzy kid tripping into English class and spilling his books and pencil case all over the room? Now that's just harsh and verbally ironic, because what you said is not what you meant. That is verbal irony. You have said the opposite of what you mean. Additionally, since you have the intention of mocking this poor person, you have been not only verbally ironic, but sarcastic as well. Beware, though. While all sarcasm fits the definition of verbal irony, not all verbal irony is sarcastic. Verbal irony is where what is meant is the opposite of what is said, while sarcasm adds that little punch of attitude. There are times, though, where another layer of meaning can be present without that sarcastic tone. All right, now go out there and find those examples of verbal irony and sarcasm. Good luck. No, seriously, I mean it. Good luck. No, 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 really, I truly want to wish you luck on this difficult task. Okay, okay, sincerely, good luck. You can do it. No verbal irony here. <laughs> Right then. So, task for you. Um, evaluate this use of irony. Why did the author include it and what is the purpose of this irony? I want you to be specific here, so talk about the verbal irony um, rather than just irony in general. So, let's move on to another form of irony, which is situational irony. A promise. So, what would you expect from a doctor? Probably the opposite of Dr. Jekyll's behaviour. In the story, is there somewhere that he actually helps a patient? Does he ever heal anyone? No. Dr. Jekyll spent increasingly more time drinking his poison to become Mr. Hyde, a sadistic villain who tramples a small girl at the start, at the start and later batters a man to death. He is a doctor sworn to heal people who carries within him the impulse to harm for the sheer fun of it. This dichotomy is called situational irony. And remember what dichotomy means as well. And if you don't, Google it. Um, but I can give you a quick definition. So dichotomy is like um, two, con two contrasting images put next to one another so it's a bit like um juxtaposition um but slightly different um okay so yet Hyde is still Dr Jekyll his alter ego or other self and, Je and Jekyll is not abusive to others in the form of Hyde he is abusive to himself every time he drinks his potion distorting his own mind and body grotesquely with full knowledge of the consequences, he indulges his dark side and throws all decency aside. The situational irony is not only that he is cruel when he is Hyde, but also when he is the sober-minded Dr Jekyll, he still chooses what we would expect him not to choose. This is all very contrary to the spirit of the physician's Hippocratic Oath. And finally, the fortunate situational irony is that the knowledge of this drug will not be passed on to the next generation. So let's watch a quick video to explain that a little further. Picture this. Your friend and you are watching a sitcom, and the sassy sidekick walks into a room carrying a four-tiered wedding cake. 
He trips, falls, and face plants into the cake. Your friend doubles over with laughter and says, So ridiculous! So ironic! Well, quick, what do you do? Do you laugh along with the laugh track and let this grievous misinterpretation of irony go? Or do you throw caution to the wind and explain the true meaning of irony? If you're me, you choose the latter. Unfortunately, irony has been completely misunderstood. We tend to throw out that term whenever we see something funny or coincidental. And while many examples of true irony can be funny, that is not the driving factor of being ironic. A situation is only ironic if what happens is the exact opposite of what was expected. If you expect A, but get B, then you have irony. Let's take the slapstick cake situation as an example. When someone walks in, precariously balancing something that shouldn't be carried alone, trips, falls, and makes a mess, it is funny, but it's not ironic. In fact, you probably expect someone who is single-handedly carrying a huge cake to trip. When he does, reality aligns with expectations, and so that is not irony. But what if the sassy sidekick walked in wearing a gold medal that he'd won at the cakewalking event at the Atlanta Olympics in 1996? What if that sidekick was a professional cake carrier? Then, maybe there would have been a reasonable expectation that he would have been more skilled when carrying a ridiculously large cake. Then, when that reasonable expectation was not met by the tripping sidekick, irony would have been exemplified. Another example. A senior citizen texting and blocking. The common and reasonable expectation of more mature men and women is that they don't like or know technology, that they have a hard time turning on a computer, or that they have the old brick cell phones from the 1980s. One should not expect them to be connected, high-tech, or savvy enough to text or to be blogging, which must seem like some sort of newfangled thing that, back in my day, they never had. So when Granny pulls out her smartphone to post pictures of her dentures or her grandkids, irony ensues. Reasonable expectations of the situation are not met. That is irony. So while the cake dropper might not be ironic, there are all kinds of situations in life that are. Go out and find those true examples of irony. Okay, then. Okay, next task for you then. So write down an example of your own of situational irony. You can Google this if you like. Um, I've got one example for you. So um, one example of situational irony could be my... Um, Okay, so we've got a policeman, his son has been arrested. That would be situational irony because you would not expect a policeman's son to be arrested. So let's move on to dramatic irony now. This is our last form of irony. So dramatic irony, a known secret. <clears throat> uh, the first example of vi verbal irony is also an example of dramatic irony. We, the readers, know why Dr. Jekyll can't share information on Hyde, so we are in on a secret with Jekyll. This is dramatic irony. We know these two opposites live within one man. Henry Jekyll doesn't want to talk about him because that's his secret. Hyde, was committed, Hyde has committed crimes, which kind of means Jekyll has committed crimes as well. But the others in the tale don't know any of this. They are in the dark, and that's what makes it fun. We are given a bit of a privilege to be let in on the secrets that the people in the story have not yet discovered, and we get to wait and see how they struggle to find out the truth. Another example of dramatic irony has been provided by the passage of time. The story was published in 1886, but at that time the early readers did not know any more than each page revealed and felt each surprising plot twist as something fresh and, and unfamiliar. But this is not the case for the readers of today. Now almost a century and a half later, who has not heard the story of Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde? 
or at least seen some variation on the plot of the good doctor transforming into an evil monster. This theme is enough a part of English language cultures that we would all understand when a moody person is referred to as a Jekyll and Hyde. So, in a way, with the reader of today familiar with Jekyll's secret, it seems yet another example of dramatic irony. Where Jekyll and the reader both know the secrets, while other curious characters such as Utterson are left clueless and in the dark. So again, just to um, complement this information from the text, I want us to watch this video um, just so that we can uh, reinforce our knowledge. What do horror movies and comedies have in common? The two genres might seem totally different, but the reason they're both so popular is perhaps because of what they have in common, their use of dramatic irony. First, let's clarify. There are three types of irony out there. Situational irony is when you expect one thing but get the opposite. Verbal irony is when someone says something but truly means the opposite. Dramatic irony, though, is what we'll be looking at right now. Dramatic irony is when the audience seems to know more about an event, a situation, or a conversation than the characters in the movie, on the show, or in the book do. The audience is in on a secret that the characters have missed. This is a great storytelling device that creates tremendous emotion within that text. Think about it for a moment. How does it feel when, in a horror film, you know that the scary villain is hiding behind that door in the darkened room? The music becomes eerie. The lighting creates complete shadows. This has to be bad for the hero. Of course, though, that hero must enter the room to find the villain. You feel tremendous tension and the suspense of knowing that someone will jump out and be scary, but you just don't know when. That tension is dramatic irony. You know something more than the characters in the film. Now, take the typical comedy. There will probably be some type of misunderstanding. Again, we know more of what is going on than the characters do. Picture two characters making a plan for a birthday surprise for their roommate while that roommate overhears the entire conversation from the hallway. From there, confusion and misunderstanding occur, and the tension builds. But this isn't the same tension as the horror film, since it is probably pretty funny, as the characters try to figure out the who's and the what's. But it serves as a great example of the tension and suspense of dramatic irony. This tension, or suspense, in both genres drives the story and keeps the plot progressing. The audience wants, no needs to see the tension of the dramatic irony broken either by the scary person jumping out of the shadows or by someone finally revealing someone's true identity and clearing up the confusion. So when you feel like you are in on a secret, that is dramatic irony, a hallmark of all the great writers from Shakespeare to Hitchcock. <laughs> Okay, good. So I hope that's given you a bit more context and understanding of these three forms of irony in the text um, and definitions and examples out of the text as well. So let's just um, do our mini quiz for today. So they're multiple choice questions and they're just to see whether you've understood today's new knowledge. Pause the video, get this... Um, completed and then I'll put the answers up on Teams tomorrow. And finally, let's review. So, in the text, irony is shown in three forms. One, verbal irony. Jekyll speaks of being sure of Hyde and protecting his patient. Utterson takes this to mean that he is being an ethical doctor, but really, Jekyll has another meaning entirely. Next is situational irony. Jekyll is a doctor sworn to heal, but deep inside he has the impulse to harm for pleasure, abusing himself in the process. And finally, dramatic irony. While the characters are in the dark, the reader knows the secret of why Jekyll can't share about Hyde. Modern readers know even more about the whole situation as the story is well known. So write down one interesting piece of context that we could link to this lesson. So Remember, context is external influences to the text, such as the Hippocratic Oath, 
Um, this is stuff going on in real life outside of the text, but it influences the text itself as well. So write down one interesting piece of context that we could link to this lesson. And once you've done that, um, upload your work under assignments. And if you've got any questions, just let me know. Thank you for listening.